All right, and we're back. So we're gonna be doing a walnut eating spoon today. Uh, it's a pretty small little shim of walnut here, so it's not gonna be a whole lot of wood removal, and uh, some of it will be just to get off some of this some kind of funky wood uh, because it was a is a naturally fallen tree. So it can happen anyway. With some woods are more prone to uh, insects. There's, generally a specific insects for each type of wood and there'll also be different sizes of insects um, I've uh, had some Tilia cordata which is a little leaf linden relative to basswood but very hardwood and it, it's got really huge suckers that come out of there it's uh, no good these are some just I think there's like two small holes on this one and there's no live worms in there you really don't want to deal with those live ones uh, in my beginning of collecting wood, there was some wood that I really wanted and put up with hacking through some live worm uh, wood and uh, I just, I won't ever do it again, it's too gross and you'll be, you'll be chopping them in half and they'll be still squirming it, it's just gross so let's see here I'm using my little flicking motion to get most of this off this wood is, um, I think on this, this specific piece of walnut was mostly dry, but not all the way dry, and it had been kept outside. And uh, if you find your own wood, um, I would suggest leaving it outside until you carve it. Uh, it'll be pretty much stable, but it'll just uh, not quite be as brittle. It'll just work a little bit nicer. So yeah, this is walnut. This is stuff I got out in Pennsylvania. Uh, when these guys are doing the antique um, milling thing, I don't know. They had like, like three foot uh, circular saw. They were running some trees through. And I got some of the cutoffs. So you can see there's also some kind of like strange colors. Walnut kind of has that when it gets to the outside. I guess it depends on the species. Not sure exactly which one this is, but it also, it's kind of like, I think maybe a bit of a type of spalting. I'm not really sure about that. I'm not sure if, yeah, I just don't know enough about walnut. Um, but it's uh, safe to eat with, and uh, it's great. I really like it. I've had a few uh, spoons, eating spoons I've had for a while. Um, I really enjoy it. It's up there. Definitely one of my favorites up there with Sycamore, London Plain Tree. Alright, so instead of going to get a saw, I'm just going to hack this thing in half. And uh, this is what I do to hack stuff in half. It's basically what you do when you're felling a tree. You go in from an angle, go in from another angle. And if you're holding it like I am, you, when you strike towards you, you want to make very sure that you're not actually striking towards yourself. And that it's a safe... Well, that thing just flew off, didn't it? It'd be a safe angle so it's going down and that there's... Not any sideways motion so that even if it uh, bounces off, it won't go towards your hand. So now we're pretty close. Yeah, you can kind of see from this angle how I come in from the side. Um, if it was more straight on, you would see that the axe is really far away. When, it's, when it looks like it's kind of close to my fingers, it's not really. Alright, and this is kind of what I've been doing recently to kind of get in the the head of the spoon the shape of that you gotta be careful of course of those strikes towards the uh, head of the spoon not this direction this direction right here um, just really just flick them and don't let them go too deep you'll split the whole thing so how much of this type of stuff you do is kind of depends on your comfort level and also the wood this right here is very risky um, and if you know you don't have and you ruin your spoon very easily if you hit the wrong place. And you can very easily do just this right here for the for the whole taking out, removing of that wood off, off of there. Also, and to make the shape of the head, um, I've just used a saw before um, to get that, that piece out. When I didn't feel as comfortable with the hatchet. And um, again, if you haven't seen my other spoon carving videos, um, you know, all, really all of this I wouldn't have done in the past with the hatchet. I would have done with a knife uh, or gouge. And just kind of, as I've evolved, um, just kind of do more and more with the hatchet. And I imagine I'll go further because um, when I see guys that uh, have done more spoons than I have, they get a lot further. So, all right, I'm going to readjust the camera there. Not sure why I did that. Didn't really do anything, did I? 
Alright, so we kinda this is gonna be the, the top of the spoon right there. So I'm flattening it out. <clears throat> you don't have to flatten it out a whole lot because after you get the spoon part out, uh, you see that little funny banging I'm do doing there? When the angle's too steep, you can kinda just bang it and it'll still manage to split that wood. If you have straight grain, of course. If you don't have straight grain in your in this in the wood you're carving, you don't want to do any of that axe stuff where you split. Because uh, it'll just split the wrong direction and you'll not have a spoon anymore. What was I saying? Yeah, you don't have to flatten out the top of the spoon. Um, I kind of do most of that after I've dug the bowl out because then there's like way less spoon uh, just on the rim to, to flatten out. And, you know, something may have happened in between then and then. And then. Are we getting some shots right at the camera there? Yeah, um, I would also say that uh, how fast I'll run my knife down the handle of the spoon. Um, that's also another thing, that if the grain's not straight. Um, and I think also I just didn't used to do it, because I would try to do it, and the, the blade would catch in. I wouldn't have the right pressure on the, the blade. And it would dig in and go too deep into the wood. Here we're using some paring cuts to get the tip of this shape here. I'm kind of banging this thing out kind of quickly. Uh, carving with disdain. So there we go. We got most of the shape except for the bowl. Let's get a little bit more smoothing done there. Of course a lot more needs to come off that handle. You can see how rough it looks on the end as well. And there's a little bit more shaping there. This is the uh, an upswept knife from Deep Woods Ventures, and uh, I did the handle myself as a video. I put up of the whole process. See, it's that uh, spalted tamarind. Really turned out nice. And there's the Deep Woods Ventures, uh, smaller of the two wood carving knives. And that uh, that smaller one's great for for these eating spoons. It's supposed to be better for beginners anyway. Um, I kind of got this one after the larger spoon my carving knife, so I couldn't really say. Um, but I really like it. I'm glad I got it. Um, it's really been it's it's been more useful. The the shape of it because it's not like uh, all one sweep. It curves up at the end there. I really like that. I didn't have that in my other knives, and it's just got a nice little thing on there, so you can really kind of shape out the bowl on these smaller ones instead of going with whatever sweep the the blade was. So uh, I'm just going a little bit up against there. After a certain point of going cross grain, when you're digging out the wood, you start going up a little bit too much, and it'll start catching the other side. So you got to switch over. Or you can kind of do this rotational thing you see me doing. It kind of looks like I'm going sideways, but I'm kind of rotating it as well. And I'll kind of do that everywhere. You kind of plant it. It takes a while to get comfortable with the spoon carving knife. You can see I'm still not super comfortable with it like I am with the other tools. And... Um, when you start out with a spoon carving knife, it's just so awkward. And um, some people, they've done a lot of different inventions to try to uh, be able to get good leverage on this, uh, these spoon carving knives. Um, I saw one, there was a girl, I think she was a British girl doing stuff, and she, she just put the spoon in a vise and then kind of paddled the, uh, the spoon knife. A lot of people have much larger handles, very thick handles that so they can really rotate or they're just wider so they'll go up in their forearm to get a little more leverage and there was a guy at uh, Spoonfest, I didn't go unfortunately, but um, Spoonfest, I think last year who had this long handled one, looked like a mop handle and then he had a rope tied around the base of the knife and it went around his neck and he was sitting up on his uh, strokes and it was he was pulling uh, the front of the, the knife uh, with his body and his neck very interesting so uh, people people go through a lot of stuff to try to deal with stuff. I mean, on, on a small spoon like this, it's really not that big of a deal. You just kind of, even if it's awkward, you just deal with it until you get that wood out, and then and then you can kind of go in there and get a little better shape. But you know, whatever technique works for you, try all directions and all grips, and uh, stick with a few of them. You know, carving with a new tool is always a little bit awkward at first, and then. It'll slowly become more and more natural, and soon you'll never know what you did without it. 
So there, I'm kind of turning it over to get a little bit of contour carving on the edges there. You can do that with a straight knife, just kind of rotate it and get a bunch of angles and a little, you know, curve it out. Just kind of save some time to flip this thing over. I think it's fun, so I do that. Anyway, so the spin's basically done. It really just needs some kind of finishing stuff. Uh, a little bit more shaping. And what am I getting at? I'm getting, okay. This is the uh, larger straight knife. This is what I was saying of straightening it afterwards. Um, and the straight knife, of course, works well for that. And get a little bit more shape on the, uh, I don't know what you call this, the shoulder, the neck of the spoon. Yeah, the shoulders of the spoon, we're going to say that. And this knife will rotate a little bit, but not really. So if I want a rotation in there, I kind of need to go to that upswept knife. I'm not sure if I will. So yeah, the, this cut here is kind of something that comes from old knives that a lot of us mimic. Um, that you saw me doing is just straight kind of cut from the kind of apex of the spoon, back of the spoon, into the handle where it's all kind of a straight line. And um, you kind of do it in the front, but you kind of mostly curve that part. Um, it's interesting, that's kind of, you're setting up these supports in the, the spoon. Because uh, you want to get it as thin as possible, but uh, you, you kind of, you would think about it like there would be uh, rods of support but the rods are um, kind of melded into the rest of it. And basically there's one thicker part at the apex going uh, up and down, and then there's one going across. And uh, I need to kind of do a drawing to really illustrate that. And, but once you start get doing them, you'll, you'll understand what I mean, where the thicker parts are in these particular uh, types of designs at least. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could leave it, you know, I'm sure all the same. Just make the back completely round as the front, kind of echo that curve. And I think I've done that a few times. You know, you maybe have it slowly get thicker as it gets towards the handle, the base, uh, just so it'll have a little bit more support and a, just a little better melding between the thinness of the front and the back. So here, this is again something that I wouldn't usually do back in the day, um, of doing these little fast kind of I'm almost like planing with the knife. And although here these cuts are suggested, you do very small cuts. You'll get it done faster than trying to do a big one. And then this is uh, something I learned from Barn the Spoon going on the inside there, especially for an eating spoon. This is important um, because to make it, you don't want any sharp edges to go into your mouth. And um, it, it's not just like splinters or something, it's just, you know, it's more comfortable if it's smooth. And that doesn't just mean the outside, to get that, the edges, they're really on the top, so you have to go inside the spoon and out. Curve all the way through there. So this is where the, where the upswipe knife comes in. Doing that nice curve from the, on the shoulder there. Yeah, so at this point, I mean, I'm really just kind of refining the shape on this. And I pr probably could have even gone further, but it's uh, good enough for rock and roll. Close enough for rock and roll? I don't know what the saying is. I'm listening to Stephen King. Audiobooks. Oof, never mind. Uh, okay, no, we'll, we'll talk about this. I listen to audiobooks while I carve a lot of the time. It's a good way to pass the time. If you can pay attention to what you're doing and listen to something, which I kind of need to, it's better for my concentration, so. Um, I listen to a very dialogue based show or I'll listen to audiobooks. So, yep, still taking very small cuts out and work on the shoulder again, apparently. I thought I was done. Like, how much more wood do I need to take off? All right, we're gonna we're gonna soften this a little bit more. Do it on that a little bit more. And uh, yeah, that's about done. Okay, see how I get through that round shoulder with the tip of that knife? That's why the upswept is so nice. It'll really do a sweep cut. All right, and then see the end of that. Uh, it's a little bit rough, so I'll bring it down a little bit. 
you kind of have the handle um, going from a thick spot out on the tip to a thinner spot near the uh, the bowl of the spoon. But at the same time, you generally uh, you can't just have it do a complete um, gradation. You kind of need to have a flat spot at the back or semi-flat. So that's what I'm doing right there. And you gotta round this over. You can spend some time really rounding it over, or you can just kind of get a simple geometry kind of average round over. Oh, try to take too big of a chunk there, and I'm out of screen. And yeah, let me take that down some more. There we go. I'm just like racing through this. This is no good. You guys should relax when you carve. Only bad accidents have happened when I'm. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> On the order. Only bad accidents have happened when I'm uh, not relaxed and I'm not paying attention. One time I was standing, I was like working on something, couldn't put it down, and I like stood to move, go out of the room, and uh, I caught myself, of course. That was back in the day. I don't injure myself almost ever. I guess I should uh, carve with a glove, and they still need to be careful. So, alright, that's the end of this spoon. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I'm going to get a little few angles here. You can see what's going on. And uh, so I'll, uh, this is already pretty dry, so I'll put some uh, walnut oil or food safe mineral oil on there. I'll put it in a bag and let it soak for two or three days. I'll take it out, wipe it off, and then I'll wash it, get that top layer of oil off, and I'll be good to go. Alright, take care guys. Carve safe. <laughs>